Hey y'all, Taylor. Who are you? Josh. <laughs> We're out here moving the cattle this evening and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, the gestation period, about our bull. What else? Um, just kind of what we're looking for out of heifers the first time calving. So the gestation period is 283 days, which is what, nine months? Yes. Same as a human. So we are going to be calving in late spring, early summer. Yep. So whenever we calve, what are we looking for? So we want heifers, which will be first calf heifers at that point, but we want them to calve unassisted, so we don't have to do any pulling or anything of that sort. Um, if we have any cows that have issues, we will of course pull them, but they will be the first ones on our call list for the next year due to that. So explain what a call list is. So a call list for us is a list of cows that we look at various traits um, that we deem as unworthy to progress on the farm um, having issues calving first time you know we want all of our heifers going forward to not have any problems uh, we look at flies so um, you know cows that carry large amounts of flies especially when you compare to the south pole cattle that we have here um, we're picking for that which may seem slightly petty but it does add up because if you have a cow with a lot of flies they're usually extremely stressed or at least stress more than the cows without flies. Um, the other thing we look at is um, basically hair coat. You want a nice slick cow, a cow that's showing that they're adapted to the environment. Uh, you want some extra skin some in a few places, especially when looking at the, the South Pole cattle. Uh, you want fine bone structure, um, you know, a lot of flesh, uh, big butt, big gut, and both of those things go a long way, uh, especially the gut in holding forage. You know, it's one thing that they've bred out of a lot of the commercial cattle is gut capacity, um, especially when you compare to their frame size. So those are the things we look for. Um, there are a few other things as well, but high level, those are the things we're looking at. I guess the, the last and the biggest thing is, and we don't have any of those cattle here, but any cow that jumps fences or is aggressive when in close quarters, get rid of it. It's not worth your health uh, or putting anyone else in danger especially if it's a family thing for for everybody um, there's no sense in keeping an animal like that around um, we do not name our cattle uh, they do have ear tags but we do not name them <laughs> um, so you know they work for us we don't work for them uh, they have to earn their keep uh, if we have a cow that miscarries or loses her calf for some unknown reason we give her one extra chance and that's it. After that, she's gone. We cannot stand, a, you know, basically another year of no production. It's um, unprofitable. Correct. If you ever, um, if you ever see any of that type of stuff, you know, don't keep a cow around. Um, that's one thing that they don't look out for you on and that's whether or not you make money. So you've got to always make that choice for yourself. That's a fact. And also explain why we don't calve in the winter. So we don't calve in the winter because if you look at what we've got in front of us here, see all this nice green stuff? Um, you want your calves to hit the ground this time of year um, because of the lack of mud, um, the lack of cold conditions. Um, also, when you calve this time of year, you're actually calving in sync with nature. So the biggest aspect, and those, those few things I mentioned there were more, I guess, the low-level stuff, but the biggest aspect is when you calve late spring, early summer, the cow has a chance to reach a high body condition score or get fat before she calves um, on the new grass that's coming up. So that way when she calves, it's not going to be as hard on her to carry that calf through the spring and into the heat of the summer and, and through as needed if she starts out as fat as possible. Um, not only that, it, you know, if you've got a good bull, um, you won't have any pro and good forward, you won't have any problems breeding back at this time of year going forward. So what about, is it more likely, is a 
heifer or a cow more likely to get mastitis in the winter because of all the mud and dirt and bacteria or is that just any time of the year? Uh, they are more likely to get mastitis in the winter time and the mud and the muck and the nasty stuff especially cows that are locked in a pen or yeah. a feedlot because you've got a lot of bacteria that's um, being produced and just it's, it's constantly being cultivated on a feedlot um, or around round bell rings. Um, so, you, you know, anytime you do that, you're asking for those type of things. So, what can mastitis do to a calf that's nursing? So, it enables them not to eat. Um, if they do eat while it has mastitis, like from one uh, other to the it's, other? It's not as good for them, but most of the time they work right through it, right? It's just kind of, I guess, nasty, so to speak. So, yeah. Um, it's more of the la it's more of the fact that typically it means when a cow gets mastitis, her teats are going to be sore. She's more likely not to let that calf suck, which means she's not going to pass the nutrients to the calf. It's not going to get as much to eat as it needs. Which is why some people have bottle calves in the winter. Bottle calves, or you get calves that just don't ever take off in the in the winter time or in the beginning of their lifespan, um, and then that usually leads to pink eye and other health issues later on in their lives. Which then means you have to call the vet, treat it, um, which is just more money for for us. Josh is also a music cash Sorry. in the cows right now. All right. Any other questions, dear? I don't think so. Right. Okay. Thanks, y'all. Bye. See ya.